There are many different forms of writing, but the most intuitive by far are alphabets. With about one symbol for every sound, alphabets are easy to adapt to basically any language. While you might need to change up the letters to account for different sounds, once you have all of the sounds you need, you can easily go about writing any word you want. As convenient as alphabets are though, we didn't always have them. So where did the earliest alphabets come from, and how did we get the one we use today? To start with, we have to look at a writing system which was not itself alphabetical. Ancient Egypt's hieroglyphic writing system is famous, but a lot of people don't really understand how it works. Even though most signs look like real items, hieroglyphs are not usually used to mean what they look like. Instead, they usually phonetically represent consonants or syllables. The items they looked like were not usually arbitrary, however. Many glyphs worked on something called the rebus principle, where the sound the symbol makes is determined by the first or most prominent sounds in its name. For example, one symbol for the sound t was a loaf of bread, or tau in Egyptian. Around 1850 BCE, Canaanite migrant workers working in Egyptian lands began adapting hieroglyphs to their own purposes. The Canaanites spoke their own Western Semitic language, and as such, they applied the rebus principle based on their own words. As an example, in Egyptian, the symbol of an ox head was pronounced something like ka. The Canaanites took the same symbol and called it something along the lines of alep, or alp, their word for ox, pronouncing it as an ah sound or a glottal stop. For the sound b, they took the Egyptian sign for house, betu or bait in Canaanite. They did this for all of their consonants, reworking existing hieroglyphs to match their language and thus developed the Proto-Sinaitic script, so named because it's first seen at Canaanite work sites on the Sinai Peninsula. This script was much simpler than the hieroglyphic script, with about one symbol per consonant, making it a true abjad rather than the mixed system of Egypt. Workers returning home to Canaan brought this script with them, and over time it evolved, becoming easier to write. The ox head was simplified to this, for example. People from one region of Canaan, called Phoenicia, were major Mediterranean traders, and spread their script with them on their voyages. The Phoenician script would spread widely, first to their immediate neighbors and trading partners, and then beyond. It developed into a number of scripts in the Middle East, including the Hebrew, Arabic, and Aramaic scripts, with Phoenician and its descendants spreading far and wide amongst literate and illiterate populations alike. Most modern writing systems descend in some way from the Phoenician script. Among the people who adopted the script were the archaic Greeks, who adapted it in a whole new way. In addition to modifying it to fit their own set of consonants, they converted a few Phoenician signs into consistent vowels, turning it from an abjad into a true alphabet. They took the alep, flipped it on its horns, and turned it into alpa, representing the vowel a. Beit became reshaped in its own way, becoming the Greek beta. These first two letters of the Greek alphabet are where we get the word alphabet from, which incidentally means alphabet ultimately derives from ox house in Canaanite. Like the Phoenicians, the Greeks were accomplished sailors, and they exported their writing systems across the Mediterranean. The Etruscans of Italy were one Greek trading partner, who adopted a Greek-based alphabet in the 8th century BCE. The Etruscan alphabet was initially composed of 26 letters, of which 21 would be adopted by their Latin neighbors in the 7th century BCE. The archaic Latin alphabet then developed into a form quite familiar to us, with most of our letters being present in the old Latin alphabet, though some of their pronunciations differed. In the 1st century BCE, the letters Y and Z were reintroduced into Latin from Greek, creating the 23-letter Classical Latin alphabet. The Latin alphabet spread throughout much of Europe with the Roman Empire. Western Christian missionaries would then do most of the legwork replacing Northern European scripts, which is how the Latin script came to be used for English. With the development of medieval Latin between the 4th and 10th centuries CE, lowercase letters were for the first time introduced into the Latin script, bringing us almost to the modern form. Between the Middle Ages and the early modern period, some new letters also began to develop. The letter J originated as a variation on the letter I, with both usually representing the sounds Y or E, though in French the pronunciation of Je was also common. English, taking influence from both the Germanic and French uses of the letter, used I and J interchangeably for J, Y, and E into the 17th century. However, as early as 1524, Italians began acknowledging I and J as making different sounds, and the shift in usage would be introduced to England in 1629 through the King James Bible. The letter W was another medieval development, but this one was all about sound from the start. See, in classical Latin, the consonant associated with V was W. As the sound shifted in the Middle Ages to the modern ecclesiastical Latin pronunciation of V, Germanic speakers needed a new way to represent their common W sound. In Old English, they first adapted an old rune from their original script, creating the letter win. Old High German speakers, meanwhile, took to slapping two Vs or Us together, and this would replace win in English after the Norman conquests. Over time, this convention evolved into the letter W, probably being treated as such in English by the 14th century. Finally, we have the letter U, 
Traditionally, the letter V had been used as both a vowel and a consonant, serving the roles of both the modern V and U. This didn't immediately change with the development of the letter U. Instead, the differentiation of V into a pointed and rounded form was not about pronunciation, but presentation. V was used when either sound appeared at the start of a word, while U was used later in words regardless of pronunciation. It was only between the Renaissance and the 18th century that the two became phonetically distinct and acknowledged as separate letters. That's more or less how we ended up with our modern 26-letter alphabet. There are a few other letters that came in and out of the English alphabet, such as Thorn, F, Yor, and, well, and. But I think this video is long enough, and I could probably cover those another time. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn more, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching everybody, I've been Soma, and I'll see you next time.